just as purely a college football fan, I hope and I pray that we get Texas OU in the Big 12 title game in Jerry World for a Red River rerun for a number of reasons. I'll unpack them right now. Before I do, though, if you're a Texas fan, if you're an Oklahoma fan, make sure you're dialed in right here to the On3 YouTube channel, College Football, only college football, every single day. We're live three times a week, 11 a.m. Eastern, right here. The hard count is live for an hour, predicting games, giving you analysis, all that. Make sure you're dialed in. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, at Judy Pacquiao. We appreciate y'all in advance for that. Like I was saying, though, the schedule is going to play itself out, but there's a number of reasons why I hope that we're getting a, a rematch of this game. The first of which being, I think these are the two best teams in the conference. Like, if, if the goal of the conference title game, and the Big 12 is divisionless, so I think they're doing it the right way, if the goal of the conference title game is to get the best two teams to play for the title, you look at Oklahoma and Texas, and I understand, like I said, the schedule will play itself out, so we're kind of going to get to have a gauge for this by nature of what they do the rest of the season. But these are the best two teams. If you look at how they're built on paper and what they have and what they showed on the field this past Saturday, two of the best quarterbacks, hat tip to Jalen Daniels over there at Kansas. Hope he gets healthy soon. But with Quinn Ewers and Dylan Gabriel, from what I've seen to this point in the year, those are the best two quarterbacks in the conference, the best two defenses. Now, statistically, I understand there's different things that – could come into play that you point to other defenses throughout the conference. I'm just saying from a total body of work, when it comes to personnel, I think those are the two best defenses that we've seen to this point. Oklahoma creates a lot of turnovers. I think Texas is really great in the trenches. Oklahoma was great in the trenches this past Saturday. To Andre Sweat for Texas is probably one of the best interior defensive linemen at least in the conference, if not the entire country. He's going to make a lot of money in the NFL one day. Like, you hear what I'm saying. The way these teams are built on the defensive side of the ball as well, I think makes them one of the best, or not one of, the two best defenses in the conference. Also, I think they have a real case for being the best two staffs in the conference. And if you're going to push back on that, I think they're the two best play callers offensively in the conference when it comes to Steve Sarkeesian and Jeff Levy. So we understand the, the product is made up of ingredients, and the ingredients that both these teams are made up of, I think, are creme de la creme. They're the best two in the conference. And so, as a college football fan specifically, like without having a horse in the race on either side, if you're a Texas fan, you feel some type of way. If you're an Oklahoma fan, you probably feel some type of way. But just purely as a college football fan, a number of reasons why I'd love to see this. First, like the, the entertainment value was so good on Saturday. It was back and forth. It was tremendous pageantry with it being in the Cotton Bowl. I understand it'd be different if it were to be in the conference title game, but you hear what I'm saying? Like the juice around that game and the entertainment value, second to none. Uh, it'd be poetic, honestly, for them both to play before they leave the Big 12. I understand if you're a Big 12 fan, you're pulling hard for West Virginia. You're, you're pulling hard for anybody and everybody to beat either one of these teams the rest of the way and to get them out of the conference title game. But like, Let's be honest, from a storyline perspective, it would be a little bit poetic if Oklahoma and Texas played for the conference before they left. And also, to be real, like take the college football fanhood part of part of this equation out of it. Like, I think we need a rematch to get a good gauge, too, for who gives the, the conference the best chance in the college football playoff. Because I think it would be a college football playoff play-in game. A lot of talk about the expanded playoff, and we need another playoff game and all that. Like, this would be the expanded playoff. College football as a whole sidebar college football as a whole is already a 12 week expanded playoff double elimination style i'll take a step back from that though if oklahoma wins this game a second time like mic drop period the end they are the best team in the conference they give this conference the best chance in the college football playoff now if texas is able to regroup and beat Oklahoma. We got to use the eye test a little bit because Oklahoma fans would say, well, we won the first round, then y'all got us the second round, so it's actually 1-1. We use the eye test, but if Texas is able to beat Oklahoma, I guess it would be early December, you would say, okay, Texas at this point in time is playing their best football. They regrouped and were able to correct their mistakes, beat Oklahoma. They give, they give the Big 12 the best chance in the conference. So I understand there's probably some pushback about this whole conversation around Texas giving the Big 12 the best chance if they beat Oklahoma in the college football or in the, excuse me, if they beat Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game and end up representing the conference in the college football playoff. 
But as a whole, like that's kind of how I would feel if that thing were, were to go the way that I think it could and both these teams meet in the Big 12 title game and run the table the rest of the way. Now, if these things play out the way that we expect them to, like I just said, if Texas doesn't lose a game the rest of the way, they get to Jerry World. Oklahoma doesn't lose a game the rest of the way, they get to Jerry World undefeated, mind you. It also, I think, would just solidify that this is the, the team that should go and be in the college football playoff. Like, look at Texas. The resume they would have if they beat Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game. At that point, you have to assume Oklahoma is at least a top 10 team. Heck, maybe they're top five, top three. They would have a win over Oklahoma and avenge that loss. So that would be a, a top five win, probably. They'd also have the top five win against Alabama at Alabama. That resume, I know they got the one loss. I promise you, that would be good enough for a college football playoff berth. For Oklahoma, we already said this, they're undefeated if they go the rest of the way. They beat Texas twice. Like, you're not keeping Oklahoma out of the dance. Even if you wanted to, you have probably two top 10 wins at that point against Texas. And you say, yeah, we're, we're not take a no for an answer let us in the building all right step aside now i also want to make sure that we talk about this when it comes to oklahoma and texas if they do and this is a big if we keep prefacing this conversation with this if they both run the table if they meet in the, the big 12 title game i think both these teams would give whoever they end up meeting in the college football playoff really good game and I say really good game in the sense that I think they could win that football game. Now, it depends on who they draw on the matchup and all that. But just by nature of the way these teams are built defensively, like we already talked about, and the way that they play offensively, it is very difficult to match up with either Oklahoma or Texas by nature of how they call the offense and how they run the offense. Both of these schemes, if operated correctly, should always make the defense wrong. Like you, in the RPO scheme, you're always going to have an answer for what that defense wants to do to you. They want to sell it to stop the run. Mid play, you can pull it, get the ball out to a receiver, a tight end, whoever it is. If they want to keep that box light, you can give the football and you're able to get something going on the, on the ground game. Obviously, there's a lot of execution baked into that. But from a 30,000 foot view, these offenses will be really difficult to defend. And these quarterbacks in their own right, I think, give you a chance in any game you play including a college football playoff kind of game. So again, as a college football playoff fan, would love to see this matchup. And the last thing I want to say about this, I know there's some kind of feeling that we have on this show about expansion and about conference realignment and, and tradition being messed with. And like, we still hold that stance, but it's kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, this train is leaving the station, either get on or get left behind. So obviously we love the game. We love college football. We're going to get on the train. And this would be a nice little sneak peek into the future of what college football is going to be in 2024. Because you'd have to imagine if either Texas or OU make the college football playoff, I mean, you, you probably draw an SEC team at some point in that, deal, in that deal, right? Like maybe it's Michigan, maybe it's Ohio State, maybe it's Penn State. I understand you can maybe draw them in the first round, but... I don't think it's wildly irresponsible to assume that they could play a, a Georgia or an Alabama or a, and I don't want to go too far down the line here of potential scenarios because I know we'll get some kickback in the comments section. But you hear what I'm saying? Not irresponsible to assume that either one of these teams could draw an SEC team in a college football playoff. That'd be a great gauge for us to assess how far along they are when it comes to that transition to the SEC, whether it's Texas or OU. And the reason why I say that is it wouldn't be a, an SEC team that's still coming together at that point in time. Like a lot of people, I promise you, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, feel differently about that game that happened week two against Texas. And I, I mean, they feel differently about their team from week two to now. Like they think their team's kind of starting to round into shape. There's no discussion about that when it comes to the college football playoff. Now, to be clear, I think Texas still wins that game if they play Bama today. So let's get that out there. But the conversation around, well, Texas is, is this when they play an SEC team or Oklahoma is this when they play an SEC team. It would be against a legit SEC team at that point in time, like the best they have to offer. So all that's to say, as a college football fan, selfishly, I hope we get this game again, man. I hope we get this game for the juice from the storylines to the matchups to the brands, like all of it. It would, it would, it would be just 
so poetically college football for us to get this again in the Big 12 title game before both teams leave the conference and we expand the playoff and we hit the reset button on college football. I hope it happens. If you feel differently because you're a fan of either team, I understand. But regardless, I think it will happen and I can't wait to watch it. If it does happen, you better believe we will talk a whole lot about it when it does happen and leading up to it happening and just all things college football every single day on this very channel. So make sure you're subscribed, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling. We will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.